listening to Statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker, and in today's video we're going to talk about zero force members. Now, the idea of a zero force member is if you have a truss made of completely rigid bodies, nothing flexes, nothing bends, that there could be some of those members under a given loading that would have no force going through them at all. And so I'm going to give you some techniques that you can actually visually inspect a truss and get rid of those zero force members before you start your computations. Okay, so technically, if you can't identify zero force members, they'll still come out in the wash if you identify all the forces in all your members that you'll find those zero force members computationally. But wouldn't it be nice to go ahead and eliminate them before doing all that math? Okay, so zero force members by visual inspection. All right, and again here, a zero force member, just put a little definition on here. This is defined as a truss member with no axial load. So axial means along the length, so I could also say no tension and no compression. So we have two different rules to find zero force members, starting with rule number one. And rule number one has to do with two members meeting an unloaded joint, okay? So if two members meet at an unloaded joint, then both are zero force members. So a case for that would be if we were given a problem sketch looking something like this. Okay, so a truss made of two triangles. Let's say that there is, let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram. So we'll say that there's a pin here on the lower left corner and a roller supporting the lower right corner. And let's go with one added force here, call this force P. And so taking a look at this truss and thinking about really the flow of forces, right? We know that P is going to be split between this member here, this member here. So those would be in compression. And then this lower member here would need to be in tension to hold this whole thing together. And so basically the two members over on the left don't have any need in this truss to have forces going through them. So it turns out that both of these members, and I often mark them with Zs, are zero force members focusing on this is that joint. Okay, two members meeting at an unloaded joint. So that's my unloaded joint there in pink. Now I should add a slight modifier to this if two non-collinear members meet at an unloaded joint. There are some cases if we had two members in line with each other, and I'll show you what that looks like here moving forward that if they're in line with one another, then they can actually just transfer the force from one member into the next. And so that's almost like a third rule where if you have two collinear members meeting at a joint, then their value, their tension or compression is going to be equal. But let's go with number, rule number two first. So rule number two focuses on three members or forces. Okay, so we'll put here if three forces. Now, these forces can be interaction forces. These can be um, reaction forces. And these can also be applied forces. So any kind of forces that would show up on a free body diagram on a joint, if three of them meet at a joint and two are collinear,
then the third is a zero force. member. I think of this as like the third wheel rule, right? So if you're heading out with a friend of yours and their significant other, right, and you're rolling solo, you're going to feel a little left out. I'm not going to say you're going to feel like a zero, but I'm just saying that the other two are collinear, right? They're seeing eye to eye, they're totally in, in lockstep, and then there's you. Okay, so, so this, once again, is with three forces or members meeting. So let me show you an example here. Let's say we have a little bit bigger truss. Something like this. Let's just go with a couple of bays here. That works fine. Once again, anytime I draw these trusses, we have pin joints at every corner, all two force members for every member. And a member here, and one more over here. Okay, so there's my truss. Noting it's still made of triangles, right? So technically, our classification of a simple truss would still work internally. And then if we add some support forces, let's say that we have a pin over here on the lower left. Let's add external forces on both of these top nodes. Let's also add one right here. Okay, and then a roller here. So let's say that this is um, P1, P2, and P3. Okay, so three forces, three loads. And we'll go with AX, AY, and I don't know, call this CY. Doesn't technically matter. All right, so keep in mind, we need three forces coming into any of these joints. Okay, so looking at these joints, and I can go around and count them, right? So over here on the far right, I have three. Let's count now and we'll analyze for the collinear part later. Um, up here in the upper right, I have one, two, three, four, and the force, there's five. The next one coming around counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, and the force makes five. Here in the lower left at point A, one, two reactions, three, four members. Uh, here we have one, two, three. Here in the middle, one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three. Okay, so that's all the different forces coming in those points. Now getting into the second part about being collinear. Two are collinear. Are there two collinear forces over here at C, right? Collinear means in one single line, or you could also say that share the same line of action. Turns out there is not collinear um, forces at C, so we can ignore that one. The other two spots where we had three, let's look at this one here first, right? So collinear, in line with each other. So these two are in line. The third one is a zero force, so therefore that one coming in is a zero force. Now, you'd get this value anyway if you summed your forces in the y direction equal to zero, right, on this problem. You have nothing else going on in the vertical direction, therefore the force in that member would have to equal zero. Now, it turns out it's not only true when things are perpendicular, but also when they're non-perpendicular. So revisiting this joint over here, once again, three forces coming into this joint. Still two are collinear, this one and this one. Therefore, the third one is a zero force member. Now, you could also, again here, if you wanted to, sum your forces in the y direction equal to zero. And even though you're only going to have a component of that third leg, that one that goes up there, not vertically, but upwards, um, even if a component of a force is equal to zero, then the entire force must equal to be zero as well. All right, one of the last things to say about zero force members is the idea that it is an iterative process. It is an iterative process which will always 
leave triangles connecting applied to reaction forces. So the idea of it being iterative, it means that once you get rid of some, go look for more, okay? Because you can actually find more in a system. So if we look here at another truss system, it's again, all the straight members are going to be rigid bodies everywhere they come together will be a pin okay so pin 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 all the way around so let's label these we'll go counterclockwise a b c d E, F, G, H, I, J. And let's add some forces. Let's say there's a pin here at A. Let's say there's an applied force at C, a support over here at E, an applied force at G, an applied force at H. All right, so before I go through and eliminate the zero force members, I would encourage you to give it a try to eliminate those zero force members. Don't forget that it is an iterative process. So once you get rid of some, go and look for some more. So feel free to go ahead and pause the video and go look for zero force members. All right, so let's go ahead and find all the zero force members. I did label one more joint here, which is K. I also um, created another copy of this truss so that as I go through and find the zero force, I'm actually gonna erase them. So you can see as we get down to just basically a truss, they'll be able to hold the applied loads with triangles. So our two rules, rule number one, two members meeting at an unloaded joint. Turns out we don't have any joints with only two members coming into that joint. So let's put that one on the shelf. Now with three members meeting at a joint, three, now this is either members or forces. We have that happen here actually in three different locations I see right now, here at K, here at J, and over here at I. So with that, we can get rid of FK, I can get rid of DK, and I can just need to get rid of BI. Okay? Now, here are those joints I mentioned earlier that if you have collinear members meeting at a single joint, that these won't go to zero, but they're basically just going to pass the force, say, from GK into EK. Okay, so if GK has a tension of 100 newtons, EK is going to have a tension of 100 newtons. Okay, exactly the same. All right, now this iterative idea. Now we can look at joint B and joint D. At these two joints, again, we have three members meeting, three forces coming into our free body diagram. Two are collinear. Therefore, we can get rid of BH and get rid of DG. Now back to rule number one, we can see over here now, F is sitting out here all on its own, two non-collinear members meeting an unloaded joint. Therefore, no forces are coming through this member either. Fundamentally, I could even get rid of the joint if you wanted to. And here is our truss. It is still made of triangles and it's still connecting all of these applied forces. Okay, so you can make sure to check those things as you work on this topic. Thanks for learning today, and I hope you're having a good one.